In this episode, I drive to Los Angeles to meet with the executive CD of McCann Erickson, Steve Levitt, where he speaks about the agency, clients, the ad business, and other stuff. And of course, since we are in LA, we had to stop downtown so my wife could spend some money. But more of that later. Hi, I'm David. I'm a creative explorer. I design, I consult, I experiment, I'm a coffee snob and a food lover. It seems like my whole life revolves around brand and branding, and I like to talk about it. So I recently started to meet with the best agencies in the nation in a quest to learn some new things and testing my own beliefs. Those are my chronicles. Los Angeles being what it is, we started our journey experiencing its legendary traffic, and with a little bit of delay, we finally arrived at our destination, 5700 Wilshire Boulevard. Alright, so who's McCann? Founded in 1902 by a guy named Alfred, it's a global ad agency network part of IPG, one of the four rulers of the ad universe with offices in more than 130 countries. They've been responsible for memorable campaigns such as I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing for Coca-Cola in 1972, Army Strong and the Unforgettable Crisis campaign for MasterCard, and in the pop culture, they've also been referred as the worst agency in the world in Mad Men. The worst. My mother was a nurse at the state hospital in Vermont. And that was the last time I saw so many retarded people in one building. <laughs> Kenny Rickson, a Global Agency of the Year, 98, 99, and 2000. They're right up there. Making my way into their office, I first took a quick tour, and then the historical handshake between the reckless underdog, that's me, and the big ugly dog, that's them. He first talked about his debut and just like a lot of our forefathers, advertising was not his first career choice. Obviously, he followed Charles Satch's advice who said, I recommend advertising to all, especially if you have no apparent academic skills. It's easy money and whatever small abilities you may have, it can be put to good use in an ad agency. By the way, I'm not suggesting that Steve doesn't have any academic abilities, but you know, you get the point, it's just funny coincidence. See, I actually started um, wanting to be a director in the film business. I think everybody back, nobody has a direct line into advertising. I wanted to, uh, so I, I uh, got a film degree at UCLA and tried to work in production and was terrible at it. And uh, met somebody who walked in, creative director who walked in and said, you know, directed basically a, sh a still shoot I was assisting and, and said, where's the phone, when's lunch? And I said, I want to do that you can define things and hire people better than you to, to execute them. So, uh, and then I went to Art Center and started Shia, and 20 years later, I'm sitting here talking to you. So. Then I asked him about some of my generation's most notorious campaign. I think why Prices works so well is because it tapped into a human, a real human emotional touch point. It was, it, it, it's, it's, and that that um, that connection to to something honest uh, can go forever. Uh, it's not artifice. It's not some creative twist on something. It's 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 real. It's a reflection of of reality with warmth. You know, what's funny is is McCann. What McCann is good at is 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 that storytelling and that connection. You know, Army Strong. Why did that that works because. It, it, that tapped into what it was like to be a parent suddenly, not only just a soldier, but what it was like to look at it from, from a parent's eyes and their son, and what, what, to be proud of their son. What was the problem there? I thought that was great. What they solved was nobody wanted their kids going off to war. And how do I get the parents to be proud of their children and, and the heroes that they will be? All right, so Steve, how do you like McCann? It's a love-hate relationship. It's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship. relationship. I mean, you know, sometimes, who said, uh, I think Birdbox said we, we reflect our, our biggest client. And uh, my biggest client is Nestle. Nestle can be frustrating and slow and, uh, and yet big and can do all sorts of wonderfully good things if they only were, react, were faster reacting. So the, the thing in McCann right now is massive change. Is, uh, McCann is, you know, in 2006 it could do no wrong. I think it, could, it was winning all sorts of FEs and it's a big, badass agency. and. Uh, then about 2006, it started going. It started. What happened is, I think the the world changed a little bit, and the economies of it changed, and we and it got a little more. It stopped being a, a unit. Um, it stopped being a, one big idea. It became several different fiefdoms, and um, and it's been a, a challenge to how do we get into 
this new age of advertising and with a gigantic agency? What, what do you do with that network? How does it work? How do you answer to Don Draper from Mad Men, who started his own firm rather than being a part of McCann, which he refers as, and I quote, a sausage factory? Well, <laughs> uh, I think it was just a reflection of the time. That was one of the, the big shops of the time that was, you know, guilty of a lot of things, of being, of, of not, you know, it was the biggest agency in the world at the time, so yeah. it was easy to make fun. Still is. <laughs> you know, I think uh, Lee said to me, Lee Daly, I was talking to him the other day, he said, uh, we're big and ugly, we used to be big and ugly, and that was great, and we were proud of it. And uh, they, we've always been a big, ugly agency, and we won, and we made great business, but we did great things for, for business, and we, did, and we did big, gigantic, iconic advertising that changed the world. Uh, I've been here for a couple of years, and it's been interesting trying to <laughs> come to terms with, are we that, or are we the next thing? We're in the middle of change, and, it's, and right. where it lands, but we don't know. Yes, I think they're slow to react to what, what's coming. A McCann, a, a McCann shop is, is so big, it's very difficult to do, and how do we um, take what we know and be able to apply it to, are there constants of what we know to apply to new ages, new age thinking? Uh, or is it all, you have to throw it all away and start all over again? I think no one knows the answer to that yet. Okay, so tell me, what's the next thing? Is there still a place in the world for such a big conglomerate as McCann? So I, I do believe that agencies and, and, and big thinkers will always um, have a place defining brand. I do not believe uh, it needs to be in the shape of a commercial or it needs to be in the shape of a website or a webisode. Or, I mean, that should be irrelevant. It should be how to, what's the tool we use today. I, think, I do believe brands and people have a relationship with each other that is unique uh, and needs to be defined by someone. All right, all right, I get it. However, it's an idea that becomes harder and harder to sell as we are being pressured and monitored every day for immediate results. Do you think that this is why so many so many agencies right now are going into reviews? Uh, that's an interesting question. Are there more reviews now than there always ever have been? I, I believe so. Yeah. Yes. Or is it a function of agency laziness? I think that's true. I think agencies get... It's very difficult to have an 80-year relationship and they expect something new and a spark of interesting and a spark of the world is changing, what are we doing? And yet, it's sort of like looking at, you know, it's looking at a relationship that you, like a marriage. You look at a marriage after 80 years, why, why are we not interesting anymore? We've been together for a long time, <laughs> so we have to keep the spark alive. And it is up to us to, to do that. Um, the redefinition of an ad, of ad agencies, I think agencies don't know what the future is going to be. I really do. I, do, I don't believe they're going to be able to make the money they used to make. I don't believe we're going to be able to be as bloated as we ever were. I, don't think, I think we have to be much more efficient and streamlined and interesting. You have to be interesting and engaging and, and give me something back as a, as a, as a, as a brand. You know, uh, big agents, big companies like Nestle are really struggling with it. We have to be, we have to provide, provide on something other than powder that you put in to make coffee. We have to provide an entire experience. Speaking of which, I was getting curious on how he feels about some iconic people that helped define those stories, such as, let's see, Steve Jobs. Uh, ruthless, driven, committed, amazing. Unbelievable, scary to work for. I would not, you know, I have a couple friends that work over there that on um, the advertising side, it's terrifying. And you look at the work and you say, it's so simple, it's just, it's, it's gleaned out of the most simple essence, like, just like his products. For anything we do, the simplification of things to, the, to its essence, that's what, why his price is so good, because it's simplified down to what that essence, the true essence is. That's difficult, right? It's really difficult. It's not that hard to find the idea, hard to sell the idea. I think that's the, the, the amazing thing about advertising is, I've seen brilliant ideas, a lot of brilliant ideas, not get sold. <laughs> so to me, the best agencies on the planet have incredible sales techniques. There are brilliant people in the world, but they all get lost somehow in, in the selling of the idea, in their commitment to that idea, and then unwavering, and that's the other thing that's really funny about him, he's unwavering in his vision. Um, and everything that he does comes out looking like an Apple product. It, it, it's, it is, and it and becomes purer and purer to that form, I think. And what about Alex Bogusky? Uh, you know, it's interesting about Bogusky. I mean, I think what he did, uh, it's, it, you know, it's interesting because I'm, I'm, I'm actually an anti, I'm not a big Bogusky fan uh, because I think Bogusky is about, the work is about getting famous, getting noticed, and being different. Not about building relationships with long, long term relationships with brands. I mean, everything that they've done is, wow, that was incredible, that was amazing. But is it a long-term relationship with a brand? No. 
the King was such a strange campaign, and oh my God, they do great, some great ads, great ads that are really, I mean, the best ad I thought from, from them was the Burger King when they took off the, the Burger King, uh, the Whopper off the menu. It freaked people out, had those, those videos. That, that was interesting. Yeah, yeah that, kind of, that kind of work uh -huh. was interesting. But it didn't have this long enduring, it doesn't build enduring brands, and enduring brand ideas. I may be a traditional, I'm a traditionalist that way, because I think brand ideas are important. Um, but he did, they do great executions of, salt, of small things. Incredibly different. He's a change agent. Yeah, and, he really, and he changed the world. And everybody came and rushed over there. And big brands, he couldn't, they couldn't they handle it. Couldn't, they can't. Because that's not what they do. They do, let's be, they're gorillas. And when a gorilla becomes the king, you have to, do, you have to act differently. When you come out from, out, from, out from the hills and you suddenly are number one, you have to act differently. Can't act like a, a like a gorilla in the you know a gorilla fighter in the hills anymore. You have to. Who's your favorite creative? Lee. Um, only if only for his consistency of simplicity. He's not very articulate. He doesn't. He I mean he but he knows what he wants in a very simple way. What do you read? Uh, the Huffington Post. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not reading that much anymore. Uh, I don't read advertising books anymore. I don't read, okay. um, and I don't know if that's a function of of I'm bored. Is there is one book that you think that every creative should read? What would it be? It's like a spiritual book. Okay. And I'm blanking on the name of it. I think <laughs> it's um, <laughs> it's it's, it's like oh, this incredible book you have to read changed my life, and I don't remember the name of it. Uh, Power of Now. It's about. You know, being true, true to your soul and true to yourself, and not really about advertising at all, but it changed my perspective on looking at things at their, in their essence and at their simplest form. I think that people that succeed, that really succeed in enduring success in advertising, somehow understand that have that optimistic view of, that, of life and can amplify that that pure goodness of you know, why is why are you here? What's that one thing that you can provide to the world to make it better? Um, and do that in an optimistic way. The, the storytellers that do that best have to have an enduring quality that's wonderful. Jeff Goodby has that quality, I think. He has a he has a, a, a sense of of optimism. And Steve Steve Jobs clearly he may not be that in person, but my impression is that my impression is that life is is simple and good and positive. I mean, it's really a very a nice and brands give you that feeling. But for me, brands make you feel. Like uh, a little more positive about life. Um, the best thing for me, training wise, was was teaching at Art Center. I taught the class in Art Center for ten years uh, until I got married, had kids. My wife said, "You can't go in." Um, was be able to immediately look at that precious idea that everyone has, and be able to see through it and find out that single idea and, and help them realize they're not they're not just precious. There's many of them. It's just, it was it was very interesting to do that. It's creative directing at its purest. After a meeting, my wife and I had some time to kill before hitting the road again, waiting for traffic to clear out. So my wife decided to head downtown for some shopping in the jewelry district. So how much does it spend, babe? A little bit. 